Welcome back to Mass Effect 3. We are here with Atticus, Liara, and Caden, and we are on Mars of all places. We left Earth and Anderson. We came to Mars because there's some kind of Prothean device here that can wipe out the Reapers. We're learning it now, which is a bit interesting. It's a bit timely. It makes me wonder why we didn't learn it before, because you gotta figure we've been on Mars for so long. Ever since we figured out Mass Effect drives, yeah? Admiral Hackett ordered the Normandy to Mars to locate new Prothean data that could help defeat the Reapers. But the archives on Mars are not responding. Investigate the dig site and find the Prothean data. I did go around and I looked through all the codexes and I marked out the stuff that we know. So we have a, look, we have a good deal still, kinda. And we will read them throughout the episode. I'm not gonna read them right in the beginning because I wanna get started. One more thing. Here's the mod settings that got brought up about putting the mod in, so we have the mod in now. The first episode, it was not in, and because the mod wasn't in the game in the first episode, and I kind of loaded the mod in, it seems like it was doing texture issues. I was getting green screened. So what I did was, unfortunately, I made another save. I picked all the same choices that we picked, and we're literally right in the beginning of the game. It took me about 10 minutes to get here compared to two hours the first time but we have a different build per se because what i did was i wanted to test something what was interesting is that i went to mass effect 2 and i respect shepherd mass effect 2 i took him out of energy drain because well we don't have energy drain we don't have no bonus power now so i took that the abilities for energy drain and i put them in the other stuff as in i put it in pool so we have a lot of pool now. But what I did was, I thought this was interesting because we go to Biotic Mastery here, yeah? And it seems like we have the first three, just like the second game, right? And the fourth one. The fourth one, we picked the Influence one. But the Influence one was on the top here. Instead of the bottom. So I, when I respect, I picked the bottom option, which was not the Influence, it was the Power and Damage one. And because I picked the bottom option, it looks like that's what it imported. So it imports exactly like the second game, just the matter of what you picked. If you pick the top one or the bottom one, that's how it imports. So we have the influence one now and damage and capacity. I think we're good. Everyone else is good. They're all leveled up exactly the same. Let's go. Let's see what's going on here. There was something on the other side that we may have missed. Because last episode we got this. We clicked on this one. We need to find another way up. Okay, okay. And there was nothing else in here. It was unfortunate that it it I guess the mod conflicted. Sometimes when you put mods in the games, see I downloaded it, but I did not apply it in the little setup thing. I didn't apply the damn mod. So but lift controls. How did Cerberus get into the facility? Not sure. One minute we were getting reports of the Reaper invasion. The next, there was chaos. Didn't even realize it was Cerberus at first. Could they be working with the Reapers? Doubtful. But I suppose anything's possible. We have to at least read something. We gotta read what the hell is going on with Cerberus here. But that's enough mod talk. It's in the game now. Everything is good. And let's just go. Cerberus Trooper? Assault Troopers are the backbone of Cerberus forces. Those candidates who make it through the grueling basic training are submitted to an intensive psychological program that renders them fearless, disciplined, and unrelenting. Outfitted with custom-designed armor and rifles, these soldiers function with determined, precise, and practiced teamwork. The first to rush into the fight, assault troopers often work in a tantrum with more powerful units. They make strategic use of the scenario, keeping their opponents occupied until it is too late to react to the combined Cerberus force bearing down them. So it's just basic on the Cerberus. It's not really nothing much. Where can we find... It might be under Reapers. Let's look at Reapers, okay? The Reaper called Harbinger is believed to be the oldest and largest in the Reaper Armada. From the reaches of dark space, Harbinger managed to control the Collectors a race of human-sized insectoid bipeds, as it sent them on a campaign to kill and gather humans from vulnerable colonies. The Collectors became a terrifying force in the galaxy, responsible for the murder of hundreds of thousands. 
Surviving colonists have described the tone of Harbinger's threats heard through the collectors as they attacked as visceral and terrifying. Alliance Intelligence has tentatively identified Harbinger as one of the Reapers leading the attack on Earth. He's fucking pissed that Shepard Harbinger is the oldest and largest Reaper in the Armada, so he's the leader. Has to be. It would make so much more sense. Holy hell, man. Let's look at this cannibal and then we'll head out because I really wanted to see what the hell the cannibals are. Cannibals are frontline Reaper units created from corrupted Batarians. The nickname refers to their propensity to devour the bodies of fallen comrades. This triggers a biochemical process through which the cannibals spontaneously heal themselves and grow new chitinous armor. The transformation also appears to give cannibals a greater awareness of their surroundings, leading to more strategic behavior and careful use of battlefield cover. We can probably mark out Hus since we already know, and Sovereign. Probably end the Reapers as well. But we'll just go through. It's not that much Codex. We're not going to do it right now. But if you think about it, look, I mean, it is Batarians. There's their face. The fucking Batarians. Whoa. The repurposed Batarians, basically. Holy hell, man. Get the hell out of here. We're going to wind up seeing all types of repurposed races in the galaxy. You imagine the uh, Elcor? What the hell they're going to look like? Oh, the Hanar? <laughs> Krogan? Oh my word. Spacebar? I think we're good. Let's go. I feel a little bit better that we read some of the codexes. And, well, I'm just ready. It's, wait, wait what's going on here? Shepard don't have a helmet on. What, does everybody else have a helmet? Li Liara has a breather on. So does Caden. Shepard don't have their breather on. Okay, that works. Shepard don't need it. No need. So look at the map in the other game, you press M, but that's basically just telling you where to go. Now, we just gotta pause to look at the map. Okay, cool. Easy peasy. We'll get the hang of it. Hey! Shit. Level 32. Where's Leoris? Oh shit. Whoa! Like that? Damn, we almost got killed! Holy! So warp... Bro... Is all detonators. So awesome. Damn, friends, we almost got killed. Look! Now we know, we know fully, it's not regenin. I'm not sure what regens our health. But it doesn't look like anything does at this point. Because it don't regen after... Oh, hell. Well, we leveled up, which is good. Why might as well level up. Increase recharge speed of all powers by 40% for 30 seconds. We'll do this one again. We had it last episode, but kind of had to go out of it because of the, the way we imported, I guess. Let's do it. Oh, that's going to be sick. Now we have three points. We can do fitness. It's, it's going to be hard, you know, because fitness is nice and it, the next is melee. It is what it is about the melee. I'm debating if we should go warp heavy or throw heavy right now. I don't know. I'm thinking about leaving Singularity how it is for now. We got Liara, and her Singularity is going to be... It's probably going to be better to use her Singularity over mine. She throws it down, I blow him up. Eh. Is there anything in here? Let's keep an eye out, because we haven't seen any type of loot to pick up yet. Access to the pedway. There's loot right there. Oh, a data pad. From Cameron Harrison to Exogeny Corporation, Miss Micah. Thank you for your kind offer of new and cutting edge technology. As with every other offer you've made, we're going to have to decline. Our proprietary rights experts have gone over your contacts again and found them lacking again. And in short, we're not interested. Please don't contact us anymore with your generous offers. Best, C. Harrison. I'm loving a new update. It's pretty big and easy for me to see. And the other game was too. But this one's... Really easy. Damn it. Hey, Kate. Security's been tampered with. 
Security. Oh, hey, Lear. Security's been tampered with. Ariaki Technology Gauntlets. That's odd. What's odd? What we just picked up? Ariaki Technology Gauntlets? What the hell was that? What the? We got more experience, so we're getting experience for. Oh, Medicha. No. Let me try. Hold on, Leora. Let me loot, all right? We just got some kind of Ariaki techno uh, technology Security's gauntlets. With. Oh, here we go. Shepard, see if you can gain access to the pedway. Is it busy? I can't seem to unlock the live feeds, but. Did you see that? Who's that woman in the vid? That's Dr. Ivacore. She got here about a week ago. Any luck? Pedway's been locked out. All right. Looks like there's construction nearby. We can get out on the roof. We can find a way around from there. Great. Let's move. Let's roll out. Dr. Eva Kore. Look at these. Let's look at this security stuff for a minute. See if there's anything. Is it all the same ones? Yeah, look, it's all the same ones. Is this Eva Corey running too? Having to deal with Cerberus as well? Does Leora seem like... Well, this one's static. It's staying by itself. Alright, let's go! Let's keep on keeping on. We got some gauntlets though. It seems like we were able to pick up gauntlets in this one. That means we're picking up... Armor. Did we pick up armor and such in the, in the first game? Or second game? Well, I know we picked it up in the first game, but... In the second game, we... It looks like we're, we're getting the same amount of... Things for armor. Remember in the second game, we were just... Kind of just... Got all our money and then bought... All the extra gear upgrades for Shepard. Seems like we're gonna find it in this one. That storm's getting close. Let's... Holy shit. It is. You guys ready? What the hell? Looks like the Alliance is still putting up a fight. That tram heads to the archives. Once Cerberus is across, they're at the final security checkpoint. And that's where we're headed. Holy hell, so they're already there. Oh no, we better hurry the fuck up. Barely. Storm's causing interference. I didn't read that. James, repeat. Damn it. That storm's going to be in here very soon. Yeah, I think it's already here. Good point. Casa Fabrication chess piece. We're just picking up armor as we go. Oh, this is cool. James just wanted to know our position. Damn it. So James doesn't know where the fuck we're at. He's gonna have to fly around and keep looking. <laughs> Keep on looking, James. But he lost contact with the Normandy? Oh, that's not good. This airlock shouldn't be open. Doesn't look like it was forced open. No, you have to override security protocols. If the airlock's open, that's probably not good. Well. Let's be careful. Someone vented the air from this room while they were still here. Oh, Looks like they died trying to claw their way out. This is brutal, even by Cerberus standards. So they just vented the fucking room with all these people in here. What the hell is going on, Cerberus? Why, though? From Show to Hen to Cameron Harrison. Oh, the guy's name is Cameron Harrison. Who the hell is that woman messing in my files? Get her out of here. I don't have my system messed up by some wannabe expert. It will be gone next week. Damn strangers who think they know it all, but don't care about what we're really trying to achieve here. Dr. Eva? Seriously? Don't you remember what happened last time? Yes. So they're not happy this Eva is here. Whoever this Eva person is. She's messing with their files? Uh-oh. Yeah, but... 
maybe she's something else. Maybe there's Cerberus here, yeah? And maybe this Eva is something else. A different organization. Right, right. Roger that. Just the two now. What's our order? There's an alliance force in here somewhere. We need to kick them away from the core. Check the next room. It's dark in there. Want me to shut the windows? No, not unless you want to decompress this room too. I don't see anyone. Come on, there's no one alive in there. Let's get moving. <laughs> hey suckers! We got our health back, look. Did we even... Oh! Shit, he's hitting us. They're hitting us through cover here. We can... Damn, so uh, Leora's shit just automatically... Oh! That's <laughs> just fucking sick. This is so sick. Leora's ability just goes right behind cover, just drops on their head. Did you see that? Ours, it takes it. Look, look, Leora's. Well, hold on. Was that everything in here? Let me just make sure. Leora's just arcs. Are these people friends of yours? I recognize a few, but I can't say I knew them. As the only Asari here, I think perhaps I was viewed with a little suspicion. I spent most of my time researching alone, translating. And what did you discover? Bits and pieces, really. Clues. It took them centuries to conquer the Protheans. In that time, the few Prothean survivors searched desperately for a way to stop the Reapers. If my translations are correct, they found a way. But in the end, they didn't have the resources to follow through with their plan. It's like they've ran out of time. The same, the same with the Conduit. Remember the Conduit in the first game? They just ran out of time. Everything. So Leora's stuff, it seems like just goes behind cover no matter what. What's that? The loot in this game's kinda hard to see. You gotta get up on it. So we gotta be careful, careful. These these rings don't show up immediately. SMG scope. We have weapon modifications too that we can find. It looks like we're just able to find these things. That's a welcome change because it makes me wonder if. The credits are going to be used elsewhere in this. They'll probably be used the same in shops and such if we're able to touch down on planets anymore because, well, the Reapers have invaded, <laughs> for fuck's sakes. But in the second game, we just saved all of our credits and we bought the shops out of money. Well, just to bought the shops out of everything and that was it. That's all we did. I'm happy that we're finding stuff in our travels because that's some enjoying things here. Just Walking around, finding things, finding loot, finding armor upgrades, finding weapon upgrades, and then so on and so on. Look at all this experience we're getting from just these metagels. We need to pressurize the room first. There we go. We have access to the labs. They'll take us right to the tram station. Uh, hey, there's a recording of what happened here. Security station, come in. We're seeing some odd activity down here. Our security protocols just kicked in. Everything's locked down. Doctor, I'll get you a report as soon as. Fuck. I guess we know how Cerberus got in. I should have realized it when I met her. I was just so focused on finding a way to stop the Reapers. Forget about it, let's move, don't blame yourself. So this Eva Kore is with Cerberus. Oh man, I thought she was a different part. Maybe a different faction or something. Damn, don't blame yourself, it's not your fault. Stopping the Reapers is the only thing we should be focused on. It's not your fault. But what if we're wrong? What if there's no way to stop them? What if these are our last days and we spend them scurrying around trying to solve a problem we can't fix? Liara. I know. I shouldn't think that way. I don't know how you do it. You've always stayed focused even in the worst situations. That's rough, man. Once you start thinking about the what-if questions about it all, it just starts eating at you. 
It really does. I remember the ones I love, no choice. I do remember the ones I love. When there's so much at stake, I think about my friends. Loved ones. What I'd lose if I failed. Me too. We'll stop them, Liara. Together. I believe you. Or I believe that you believe. Maybe that's enough. Okay, doors open. We can get to the labs and tram station through there. Good. Let's move. This is freaking great! 300 and... Or Paragon. Look, they put their breathers back on. <laughs> Shepard said, fuck it, I don't even care. This is great. We have Liara already. And, well, we're romancing Liara. Continuing from the second and first game. Well, for what it's worth, for whatever it was in the second game. And she's already here. Whoa. We might have a really, really long, extensive romance. In this game. Oh, that's so cool. And then we got Caden Alenko. <laughs> Fucking Caden. Anyways, this is a really good team with Biotics. It really truly is. There's a lot of... I know we... I just nerded out so much about it in the first episode, but just... There's a lot... Of things going on here. Fuck that. Yeah. It's only like they're 10 miles away. Well, there's another one. SMG Ultralight Materials. SMG Ultralight Materials. Anyways, I know I've been nerding out a lot about this, but the body combos are such a huge thing in this game, it seems. Or just the combos in general. Weapons bench. What did we get? We got an SMG. Something. Holy, okay. Time to nerd out more. This is cool, man. We have all types of shit going on here. This screen is interesting looking because it looks like it's, I don't know, low quality maybe? Possibly? Yeah, it kinda, it kinda does. It kinda looks like when you would load into a game, right? And Instead of it being 1440p, which would I have a big monitor, it looks like it's like 720 or stretched to fit. Does it not? It could just be me. We have an SMG scope here. Increases accuracy by 15% for the scope. Simple two times optical scope enhances stability while zoomed. Increasing accuracy while moving and taking damage. But we have two. Slot is occupied, we can't put two scopes on. SMG Ultralight Materials. Reduce weapon weight by 50%. Holy hell. Superior lightweight alloys replace weapon parts, making weapons less obtrusive and easier to handle. But look at it, though. Hold on. Look at the weight. See it go down, watch. Holy hell. And we'll go back to the scope. What does the scope do? It doesn't exactly do anything, it just increases the accuracy by 15%. But it doesn't s Oh yeah, you can see it barely. You can kind of see it on there. Alright, well we'll do them two mods for Shepard. Anybody else? Oh, we can't do anybody else's mods right now? That's fine, no big deal. Okay. I think we're just gonna keep the- Holy, we got a scope! That is cool. Let's go. I don't think it matters for the um, squad mates. Would it matter to put SMG light material on Liara's stuff? I don't think so. Probably not. Or Caden. Caden's got assault rifles though. Nice. <laughs> Motherfuckers are just flying around. Look at him. Does that motherfucker have a shield? He has a shield! Cerberus Guardian? Hold on, he's got a shield. We can... What can we do with a shield? Shockwave him? It says his shockwave, it's, it's red. It's insufficient. We pulled his shield! Oh, that was sick!
Shepard's here, mother effer. Damn, they dodge throw. Kaden. Alright, so warp debuffs and the blueness we see on them, we can still... We can blow them up no matter what. Warp and Reeve debuffs. Oh, there's something here, though. Hold on. Let's fight. Reeve. Hell. Whoa! They got smoke. Oh, did you throw? Singularity down? I can't see shit. Throw Singularity down. Let's get behind cover. There's shields! Alright, we gotta figure out what we're gonna, how we'll deal with these shields. Overload. There it is. Holy oh, shit, that was close. Damn, these suckers! I can dodge a lot! I'm pulling up. Pushing up. We're gonna shockwave. Can we blow him up with shockwave? It didn't look like it made an explosion sound. Kuliara's fucking singularity is so OP, it just goes behind everything. <laughs> Come here, son of a bitch. Wait, is it just... We can pull his shield, yeah? Get that shield off! Easy peasy. Are they still coming? I don't want to miss whatever this is over here. Where's Liara? Got it. Oh, there's more! Fuck! Who else? We have one more guy left on the map here. Feel <laughs> the fucking Liara's. Oh, this shit is so sick. Oh, it's so smooth. Liara's a really good companion. So is Caden. That overload was. It just took his shield right off. I want to test it and see if we can do something with his shields. As in, maybe warp him. Hopefully it stays on him. I'm not sure yet if the warp and reeve, the debuffer, stays on a shielded target. It seems like we've only- we should have tested that. We didn't. That's okay though. Fiazza? Hayako? Tequil? Yeah, maybe? Scanvo Fletcher. Yeah, I know. Two external specialists in the same week is a bit insane. But Hudson? I've heard about the Asari before. She's really well known, and she's done some amazing research on the Protheans. I don't know zip about this Dr. Eva chick, but Liara Tassoni? She's the real thing. I'm attaching some of her advanced papers on Prothean culture. Read them. You'll be a believer too when you're done. I can't wait until they introduce her to the people. This is so exciting. Yaza. Liara, you got a fan. We're getting XP for that. For just every. For whatever we pick up, we're getting XP, meta gels, and then codexes. So let's keep on, keep it on. Let's jump into the codexes real quick. Let's knock a few out. Let's knock something out. Organizations that were something more on a Centurion now. Centurions are Cerberus frontline tacticians. They are meant to enact the elusive man's strategic goals. Then this is definitely the elusive man's orders then. Although it is clear that they have leeway to adapt as an encounter develops, the only useful intelligence that the Alliance has gathered on Centurions relates to their armament. Each Centurion carries an M96 Matic Heavy rifle modified to launch smoke grenades. So they're the ones that do smoke grenades and they have the M96 Matic? Oh, that weapon's a beast! The Guardian. Guardians, the Cerberus equivalent of human tanks, are slow-moving soldiers who carry enormous 
polycrystalline composite shields. The weight of the shield requires an armored suit equipped with hydraulic assist and a dedicated power supply. Combining this exceptional protection with a suite of enviro mapping systems, Guardians focus on flanking opponents to flush them out of cover. A Guardian's slow but relentless approach is intended to demoralize enemies as well as draw their fire. But rip away their shield and Guardians become little more than cannon fodder. I didn't think that pull was going to do that. I was trying to arc it over the shield to pull his ass. Because we dropped Liara's Singularity on him and it didn't do nothing. But right here would have said rip the shield away. And the Guardians become little more than cannon fodder. They are. They're weak once you rip the shield away. That's it. Hold on. We're not done yet. Reaper War. Let's do... Well, hell, man. I don't even know. Organizations? In recent, years, in recent years, the pro-human syndicate known as Cerberus has seen its influence grow galaxy-wide. The largely untraceable organization now includes private intelligence agencies, biotics laboratories, research facilities, and the lucrative corporations that provide a front for it all. Cerberus's charismatic leader, known only as the Elusive Man, drives the organization's philosophy and interests. The level of secrecy he maintains puts professional intelligence agencies to shame. As Cerberus grows, so too does public distrust of the organization. Some commentators have remarked that Cerberus is not so much pro-human as it is anti-alien. Others question the blind loyalty of its employees. Well, I wasn't sure what this one was in here, so I just didn't even click on it. We'll listen, we'll look at known associates, then we'll head out, and then we'll try to get the rest at the very end of the episode. Admiral Stephen Hackett. Dr. Liara Tassoni is an Asari information broker with a background in scientific research on Prothean technology. Born on Thessia in 2077, she is the only child of the late matriarch Benezia. Although mother and daughter became estranged in the years before Benezia was indoctrinated by the Reaper known as Sovereign. Tassoni is also a highly trained biotic, who served under Commander Shepard aboard the SSV Normandy before the ship was destroyed in a collector attack. Before she became involved in galactic affairs, Dr. Tassoni spent 50 years researching the Protheans' technology and the mystery of their extinction. She now divides her time between uncovering Prothean ruins and consulting with noteworthy representatives of the various Citadel races. She's also the Shadow Broker. That's something. Major Caden Alenko is a human biotic and an officer in the Systems Alliance. He served as staff lieutenant under Commander Shepard on the SSV Normandy during the Battle of the Citadel and now heads the Special Operations Biotics Division at the Alliance Warfare Center. Damn. An Alliance tribunal recently called on Alenko to testify about his experience with the Reapers. Alenko suffers from severe headaches because of the early model L2 biotic implants that he was given as a child. The L2 implants have since been discontinued due to the risk of crippling neurological damage. He hasn't changed from the L2s? He's still an L2? Shepard uh, said we were an L5X. Holy shit, Caden. It might be time. Why, why haven't he switched? Is he just kind of don't want to? I don't remember fully, but we, did, something did come up on the L5 or the L2 stuff in the first game, but he just said he didn't want to he didn't want to switch. That's all we know. Flight Lieutenant Jeff Joker Moreau is a respected <sighs> pilot with the Alliance Navy. Born and raised on Arcturus Station, he is widely considered to be the best helmsman in the Systems Alliance. Moreau enlisted with the Navy directly out of school and quickly gained the respect of his superiors. He served as pilot of both the Normandy SR-1 and its successor, the SR-2, and was at their respective helms during the Battle of the Citadel and the assault on the Collectors. Moreau suffers from Vrolic Syndrome, a rare debilitating disorder also known as Brittle Bone Disease. Well, that will be enough for now, but let's just go ahead and take it in for a second. Jeffer. Jeffer. <laughs> Jeffer. Jeff and Joker. Jeffer here is most definitely the hero of the universe. He sure the fuck is. He's done so many damn good things for us. It's like, okay, it's almost like, it's not that we forget about Joker. I can't speak for other people, 
but there's just there's so many companions in this game right and we just talk about the companions all the time that we love this companion we love that companion but joker is basically he's not fully a companion but he's just that npc that everyone fucking loves that should be a companion but he's not fully a companion he's just joker's just i don't know he's the unsung hero i guess that's the best way to explain it anything else nearby all right let's get out we'll try to read more later I want to just get our barons with all this reading. This is open. I just feel like something's going to happen here. Look, they were researching all types of shit here. As they should. As they freaking should be. This is... Did we just... Okay. It just seems like a really open area. <laughs> it's eerily silent. Works for me. Can we jump over this? There we go. Leora, I bet you're loving this right now. Just all the amounts of research going on here. God, what's that stench? They just activated the decontamination protocols. With the staff still inside. Oh, shit. That is, uh... That's rough, Caden. They got the staff still inside there in a clear room, sterilized. We can't go in. Come in. Wait. How are we going to get through? There's the door we got to get through. Oh, here. There's more mods. Shotgun high caliber barrel. Oh, this is sick. Can we touch this? Don't die. We touched it. Wait, so we're going to have to... This is where they studied the various relics on Earth here. What did they find? More than I could describe in a short conversation. And they'd only scratched the surface. There are vaults filled with Prothean data troves that have never been studied. How are you guys in your breather still and, and, and Shepard's not? Hey, Caden, you got... You, you examine this shit too? Personal notes by S. Esparza. We haven't been able to decipher much, if any, of the language yet, but the visual documentation gives us some idea as to what they were studying. Namely, us. They seem particularly interested in early humanity's evolution process. Judging by the way they are organized, their files and highlighted specific occasions, it seems a bit fantastic to write this, but everything indicates that they seem to be trying to chart the curve of humanity's intellectual progression. Maybe. It's a possibility. Maybe they just seen something in us. We'd known from the first game that we... Remember when we put that... Relic of whatever Shaira gave us into that orb on that one planet. We learned about something. The Protheans were watching us when we were fucking cavemen, basically. And maybe they just seen something. Oh, is that another upgrade there? Oh, it is. There it is. Easy peasy. There's nothing else over here. I'm out of jail, though. We leveled up again. Hold on, what's this one? Sniper Rifle Extended Barrel. Hold on, let's level up. We have seven points for Shepard. I just don't know what to do yet. I'm not sure if we should go more into throw, or if we should go more into warp. It's hard to say, really. Maybe we should just keep it how it is and bum rush on fitness here. Get tankier, because we kind of are getting fucked up. Durability. Decrease shield recharge delay. Well, I see us doing durability. I don't want... I don't think we should go into melee. We... I don't... I just don't see an adept melee in that much here. Melee synergy. Fitness expert. Yeah, but throw... I'm spamming throw so much because we're detonating everything. Detonate. Increase force and damage of biotic detonations by 50%. But do we need this? It's a 1.9 second recharge. Are we going to need this? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on this because I feel like this would be a big decision here. Which one should we do? I don't know yet. So in the meantime, let's just go in fitness and not do anything with that. We'll see how throw is now. Let's go more into fitness. Four. Increase health bonus barrier by 15%. I feel like we need that. Let's get a bit more tankier. I don't know how what the max level will be and what abilities we can max out. Oh, I 
don't think it was necessary to do all this pool for now, but it's okay. I mean, we went into it. That's fine. We were, we were into it in the second game. Well, at our respect, but still. That's fine. So actually, technically, going out of energy drain probably screwed us. Because I went in the pool instead of energy drain. And we started this game probably with more just random abilities to put into something because we had energy drain. Alright, let's go. Come on. You guys ready? You're not in a squad anymore. Or you're blacked That's out, but... That's the tram line. Takes us right to the archives. No doubt Cerberus has it locked down. Hopefully we can override it at the security station. It's just through here. Okay, okay, I get it. Before we do anything else, we have to level them up. Caden has six abilities to level up. We're gonna keep going on Reeve. Duration of Reeve, or the radius. Ooh, area Reeve. Let's do area Reeve. And then he's got two. We'll do overload. Recharge speed of overload. Fucking hell, overload's 21 seconds. We'll do recharge speed, it needs it. For sure, Caden. And Liara, you got four? We can give her warp ammo now. Well, mates, game warp ammo, 50% effectiveness. What does warp ammo do? It does bonus to health damage, bonus to armor damage, barrier damage, armor weakening. We weaken their armor by 25%. And lifted target damage. We do damage to lifted targets. Fucking hell, that's so powerful. All right, Leo, I'm going to need you to use that, yeah? There it is. Let me switch weapons. And you can use it again. There's no big guns in this game, huh? At least we don't have it right now. Maybe it's something we unlock later on. Like, remember in the second game, we got the tutorials with the big guns? Well, I'm so used to having the cane on our back, and we don't have it no more. Let's keep on trekking. Warning code. Oh, we can't decipher that shit. Is that a... No. Is there something over there? Oh, here we're here. I was thinking there was something... Could Tana... Change loadout? Who's... Uh, oh, this is the shotgun. Yeah, we don't... I don't think we want a shotgun for us, at least. No, let's not do a shotgun. I'm thinking... It looks like this whole weapon weight thing is a pretty serious deal for an adept to be... Probably the highest amount of recharge time. We, we definitely want the highest amount. We don't even need to fire weapons, but... When all said and done, I want to go from... I want to go away from an SMG in this game. We literally used an SMG the whole second game. I'm kind of wishing in a second game, I do, I did wish after so long, I was loving the snipers, but I did wish that we took an assault rifle. I think we should have in the end, it would have been a little bit better, taking an assault rifle, but not only that, in this game, I want to go to an assault rifle and a pistol for our loadout here. I am just want to go away from the SMG a little bit because we used the Locust the whole time, the whole time. That's an understatement. I take it that's the only way in. It's the only way I know of. We'll skirt around it. Stay out of its sights. I'll move up first. Don't let it target you. Okay, what do we have to do here? Take cover? I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Oh, look. Caden's running too. Okay, okay. I see it, I see it, I see it. Let's go. Too fast for you, sucker. Haha. <laughs> Alright, how are we gonna do this? Can we actually run to this? Oh, yeah, we can. Press A. Watch it. Space bar. Look at all this Cerberus in there. Leora. Watch it. Oh, we can't use our abilities. Little mouse button. Oh, that is slick! Shit! There we go. The turret can't fire on us from here. Aha! Uh -huh. Motherfucker. <laughs> we got a lot of guys in here. Where are you guys at? I'm throwing grenades. Ooh. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on, don't take his shields off. Wait, we must have been hurting him. Unless the grenades did that. With the explosions, the grenades must have took his shields off. Either that or the explosions at a distance was kind of wrecking him. Damn it, we need to find more people with shields. I want to test this shit. Come on, any more upgrades in here? You know there's gotta be. There's always upgrades. So far. <laughs> there it is! Sniper Rifle Concentration Module. Ooh. I know I just said assault rifles, but man, I would love an assault rifle and a sniper to be our loadout. Can we? Is it possible? Research notes J. Tasman. The last location seems to have run dry, but judging from the communication system layout and the backup power supplies equipped by the first Prothean research base we discovered, we think a secondary base may be located deeper underground. We're going to need permission from the powers to be to excavate further, 2B2. But considering the recent renewal and enthusiasm for the work we're doing here, I don't think clearance will be an issue. No, you're finding something incredibly useful for what the hell is going to go on here. I mean, any type of new research on Protheans is just god tier. Everyone in the universe would want that. Remember in the first game, everyone wanted that damn beacon? Oh, here we go. We did that. What's over here? Can't get out there. We got anything going on with these monitors here? Just stuff in the research places. Oh, they were monitoring us. They were looking at us in there reading the codexes like, what the fuck Shepard doing? <laughs> Look at Shepard. Just like he always is. Stops to read everything. Set up a perimeter. No one else comes across. We still have teams on the other side. No one. And shut down those cameras. Looks like they've made it to the archives. And I doubt they'll just send us a tram. Can you override it? The archives are on a separate network. We're completely locked out. Not if we can find a short-range communicator, helmet to helmet. And? And we convince them that we're on their side. Tell them the Alliance forces have been taken care of. Good idea. See what you can find. What? The Major has become very capable. Agreed. Commander! I found something. <laughs> Okay. What have you got? He's got a transmitter in his helmet. If I can... My god. It looks like a husk. Yeah, not quite. But they've definitely done something to him. What the fuck? And by they, you mean Cerberus? They did this to their own guy? Is this what they did to you? How can you say that? It's nothing like that? Yeah, but how... How could you say that? It's nothing like that. Well, it's nothing like that at all. What the hell is going on here? What the hell is on with Cerberus? Why? Why do he look like a husk? How can you say that? I mean... I am curious why he could say that. Why, why he is saying that? Is that what they did to you? We're not... How can you compare me to him? Shepard, I don't know what you are, or who. Not since Cerberus rebuilt you. For all I know, you could be their puppet, controlled by the elusive man himself. That's not fair, kid. Don't try to explain it. I don't think I'd understand anyway. I just want to know, is the person that I followed to Helen back still in there? Somewhere. We are still here, but Caden does have a good point here, friends. <laughs> what if the elusive man quote-unquote, did put a tracking beacon in us and said that he didn't. I know that he said that he didn't. Miranda said that she would have, but they never did because he didn't want it to alter who we were. What if something more happened, though, that we just don't know about? I'm still here. I am who I am. Caden, it's still me. They didn't change me, Caden. But words won't convince you, will they? Probably not. I didn't think so. You were always stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Come on, let's see what Cerberus is up to. Maybe we'll both get some answers. That's so cool. Hello, this is Delta Team. Anybody there? Where the hell have you 
there. Never mind, what's your status? We're at the tram station, waiting for extraction. All hostiles terminated. Roger that. Echo <laughs> team will ride over and secure the station. Think they bought it? If they didn't, they'll figure it out soon enough. <laughs> we should get in position. Flank them when they get off the tram. Good thinking, Major. <laughs> I didn't buy that shit. Indoctrination. Oh, we can't. We can't move. Okay. We got Our stuff on indoctrination. Got it. <laughs> they didn't buy that shit. Hold on, you guys go over there. I gotta look for stuff. I gotta look for upgrades. Hello, this is Delta Team. Yeah, we missed the tram. Right thing. away. Thingy. <laughs> and they fucking bought that sh shit. You guys over there, you good? You like that? Oh, they dodging. Let's throw some grenades. Wait! <laughs> that motherfucker threw a grenade in the air. Holy shit. I think the goal is... Oh, we got one of them. Get out of here. <laughs> Just, we're not even needing to fire our weapons. This is crazy. Let's pull them. That motherfucker was frozen. Was he frozen? All right, let's try to pull again. Got a shield off. Can you give it to him, Caden? Oh, you missed. There we go. Oh, we haven't even used Singularity. Or not Singularity. We haven't even used Stasis yet. We need to use Stasis. Well, y'all Singularity is so fucking OP that it's just... It just press it on cooldown here. It makes me wonder, though. So we pull them or lift them or just anything, right? Does it hit harder if we if we do warp as the explosion? Or does it hit harder if we do throw as the explosion? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll max. We'll master this shit. Nothing in here. Got us going. We're gonna go down the tramway. Yeah, we'll master it. It's only gotta be controls or something, yeah? Yeah, right here. Look, see it it takes so you gotta really get onto the things for the stuff to Well, I guess we could have oh we gotta do this. That's what we gotta do. We gotta start hitting the the mission update thing. Hey, that's what the hell we gotta do. Storm's getting bad. We better wrap this up quickly. The archives are right on the other side. That and a squad of angry Cerberus troops. They knew. They fucking knew. Damn. They really didn't want us getting in here. <laughs> yes, it confirms my assertions about the value of the data stored here. It's important. Cycle through weapons. Look, we got more... We got more, uh... What is it called? Tutorials, finally. I know I was saying the first game, I wanted more tutorials. Here we go. For the first game. The first episode. that I wanted more tutorials, and now here we go. We just annihilated them. We gotta hurry the fuck up. We really do. We can't read what's on there. I would like to, though. Shepard said, hey, It's Delta Squad! <laughs> motherfucker. He is legendary with his, with his ways. <laughs> Wait, Leora's got mods on her, hers too. Wait, did Caden just overload? Whoa! Fuck! Where are we gonna run? 
All right, all right, we got a shield guy here. Let me warp him. Is he warped? Can't get him. Yeah, I can't get him. Can we get out of this? Oh, we can. Look, there's a spot over here. Where's the shielder guy at? Ew! We'll get it. We'll be able to test it at some point. If it affects shields. I'm believing that it is. There, there's a shield guy right there. Okay. Warp him. There it is. Took his shields right off. Biotic explosions for the win. Everything. Let's throw some grenades. That didn't work. <laughs> some grenades are hard to hit stuff with. Great. We'll pull this guy. There it is. Yeah, look, it takes his shields off. This explosion does so much damage. This is what I wanted in the second game. I wanted ways to deal with shields. Adepts can do everything now, yeah? Suckers. They really, uh. It's so fly. Look at them. <laughs> Let's, uh. Pull them. Got his shield off. Four pin. Caden. All right. Damn. Anyone else want some? This is so cool. Man, the combat is so much fun. And I love the combat in the second one. But the third one? Holy hell, man, it just blows it away. This new Adept stuff is so good. It's so freaking good. I'm so happy we picked an Adept. It was a hey, listen, look. The Adept in the first game was just bunkers. We were singularity in the whole fucking world. On all the worlds. We were just singularity in everything. It would just pull everything. But this game... And then... Well, let's talk about the second game. The second game killed it with the depth. It was still pretty good. Shotgun Shredder mod. But it was tough. It really was. It was pretty tough. We just had warp bombs and that was it. But this game just fucking blows it away, man. Vindicator change loadout. Oh, I want an assault rifle so bad. It's 125. Look, what if we take it, yeah? Can we get rid of... I don't know. Can we get rid of... Pistol? Or oh, that's not the pistol, that's the submachine gun. Damn it. It's still 150. We gotta... We're gonna have to wait. Possibly, yeah? Maybe we can get... Oh, we can use this one, though. And get rid of the Shuriken submachine gun, maybe? 175. I want to keep the pistol. Ah, no. I think since we're already committing to it for now, we'll wait until we can get some upgrades for the assault rifles, maybe. Let's hope we can. By Caden. How did I... How did I do Caden's loadout? I was able to just do Liara. Oh, there we go. Go back. Caden, I'm going to give you a different one. I'm going to give you... This one, the Vindicator. Whoa, look how much better. Friends, look. The one equipped. Right? Like this? It has... It shows what the one equipped is. This one does more damage. It has less fire rate capacity. The weight's higher, but does the weight matter? I don't. Look at the accuracy. Yeah, Caden, you're getting that one. For sure, for sure. Alright. And Liara can't. Damn it, I want it. I want an assault rifle so bad. We have to get them mods. We have to. We have to really, really find them mods. It's the only way. If we decrease it. Oh, we got more level ups, baby! I still want to level up fitness, I think. Oh, we can't. We might as well just save then. What about Liara and Caden? Caden has two. Liara has two. We still didn't use stasis, damn it. <laughs> Fuck! Man, hell, I forgot. Oh, you forgot, man. 
There's nothing in here. Okay. We're gonna have to hack doors again. Remember hacking in the second game? Doesn't look like it. Fucking hell, there he is. <laughs> Shepard. Elusive man. Fascinating race, the Protheans. They left all this for us to discover, but we squandered it. The Alliance has known about the Archives for more than 30 years. And what have they done with it? What do you want? What I've always wanted. The data in these artifacts holds the key to solving the Reaper threat. I've seen your solution. Your people are turned into monsters. Hardly. They're being improved. Improved? That's what separates us, Shepard. Where you see a means to destroy, I see a way to control, to dominate and harness the Reaper's power. Imagine how strong humanity would be if we controlled them. Yeah, wait, you're... I didn't... I was still hoping this was a different cell because you guys know how I do... I do like the elusive man. His ideals are... At all costs, save humanity at all costs, and I understand. And he was one hell of an ally in the second game, but... Why is he... What are you doing to your people? Imagine how strong humanity would be if we controlled them. Are you talking about controlling the Reapers? Wasting time? Earth is under siege, and you're hatching a scheme to control the Reapers? You've always been short-sighted, hasty. Your destruction of the Collector base proved that. That base was an abomination. Hundreds of thousands of humans were murdered there. This isn't your fight any longer, Shepard. You can't defeat the Reapers, even with the Prothean data. Don't count me out. Help me out then. Yes! Become our allies again, of Lucid Man. I, the galaxy wouldn't stand a fucking chance. The Reapers wouldn't stand a chance with us together. Don't count me out. Help me then. Yes! Work with me. Give me control of your resources and I'll stop them. You'd do better than most. But the odds aren't in your favor. More importantly, I don't want the Reapers destroyed. We can dominate them. Use their power, harness their very essence, to bring humanity to the apex of evolution. What the fuck? <laughs> Why? Thank goodness we didn't give him the collector base then in the second game! What the fuck would he would have done with it? You're deluded over my dead body. There's no way! We can dominate them, use their power, harness their very essence, to bring humanity to the apex of its evolution. With that data, I'll rid the galaxy of those machines once and for all. Your vision is pathetically limited. You were a tool, an agent with a singular purpose. And despite our differences, you were relatively successful. But like the rest of the relics in this place, your time is over. Enough talk. Liara. Don't interfere with my plan, Shepard. I won't warn you again. Go to hell. Shepard. What? The data, it's not here. It's being erased. Goodbye, Shepard. Damn it. How's he doing it? It's local. Someone's uploading the information. Fucking hell, Lucy Man's enemy now? God damn it, man. Hey, step away from the console. 
now. She's got the data. She's faster than she looks. Catch Dr. Ava. Wait, but there might be stuff in here. Cerberus the elusive man. Oh, here's our chance. She got a shield. Hayden, hit her with the good stuff. Oh, it didn't explode. Fuck you go! Oh, there she is. Stay on her. She's oh. getting away. We just won't talk. Oh, but the the we didn't loot that place up, man. I wanted to Watch so out. bad. Over there. Fuck. Get off that shuttle. How are you doing that? <laughs> She's just throwing it behind her. Come on, Liara. Caden. Trevor has the data. Radio the Normandy. Get them down here now. Damn, good hit. We got grenade stasis her ass. Come on, stasis her. I don't think it worked. Oh, it didn't work. Games. She's getting away. Oh, fuck. Damn it, James. Normandy. Anybody? I got this one. <laughs> Good hell, James! <laughs> I got this one. That's one way to stop it. <laughs> Norman is en route. They'll be here soon. You ain't driving again, James. <laughs> we need the data. Holy fucking moly. Caden! Oh no. Let him go. Orders. Dispose of him. No. no! Fucking bitch. Grab that thing. Bring it with us. Shepard! We got Reaper signatures in orbit. Caden. Caden. Well, they ain't gonna kill Caden off yet, right? I looked at the head, though. She just absolutely wrecked him. What the fuck was that thing? Caden needs medical attention. We have to leave the soul system. I know. The Citadel is our best chance. We can find help there. Get us to the Citadel, Joker. Roger that. Hold on, Caden. See what you and Edie can learn from that thing. Commander, I'm receiving a signal over the secondary QEC. I believe it's Admiral 
packet. Patch me through. I'll forward it to the calm room. Oh, man. Commander. Edie, can you clear this up? I'll do my best. Did you get to the archives? I was there. So was the elusive man. I was worried Cerberus might try something. Did you get the data? Most of it. He downloaded some before I could stop him. Edie and Liara are analyzing what we recovered. What have you learned? Was it worth the effort? Preliminary evidence suggests the data is a blueprint for a Prothean device. Device? A weapon, massive in size and scope, that's capable of unquantifiable levels of destruction. Send me the data. We'll do our own analysis. If Liara's instincts are right, this might be the key to stopping the Reapers. I hope so. Major Olenko was critically injured. We're taking him to the Citadel. Sorry to hear that, Shepard. But we both know this is just the beginning. Talk to the Council, show them what you found. With luck, they'll give you all the support we need. And if they don't? Do whatever it takes to get them on board. I'll be in touch soon. Hack it out. Shepard? Edie is extracting data from the Cerberus machine. We'll have details to present to the Council by the time we reach the Citadel. And Major Olenko? I've done what I can for him, but we need to get him to a medical facility soon. The Admiral's right. It's going to get worse, isn't it? Unless we stop the Reapers. Yeah. I've looked at the data. This weapon could be the answer, if we can build it. I get the sense you don't quite believe it, though. It's hard to believe. I just hate running. The amount of dialogue in this game so far is just transitioning from one scene to the next scene. So damn good! I hope Caden's situation is not too far from Garrus' situation in the second game. You know, Garrus got shot in the head with a rocket, but he survived. So let's hope. Yeah. I just hate running. It's hard to believe. I just hate running. I do. Leaving Earth was hard, Leora. It almost feels like we're just... Remember what Sovereign... Or, yeah. No, not Sovereign. Harbinger. Harbor, Harbinger said we're dust fighting cosmic winds. And that's what it feels like, though. And this plans, it seems so far-fetched. It's almost like feels like it's un... Unbelievably not true at all. <laughs> I know it's what's going on here, but the elusive man was right what he said. The Alliance knew about it for 30 years, and they squandered it until now. Why is he the enemy? Why? He wants to control the Reapers. That's just absurd. What did he do to his people? Though, we got something on indoctrination when we seen that Cerberus Trooper, so it's probably something with indoctrination. I'm a soldier. I should be back on Earth fighting, not wasting my time with this. If it's going to work, we need you. Shepard. Isn't it worth trying, at least? I'm gonna check on Caden and James. Make sure we're ready to present our findings to the Council. I'm sure the Council will see the need to help. It'll be a hell of a short war if they don't. Yeah, but you think they're just gonna help Earth? On to the Citadel, shall we? <laughs> yeah, man. What a crazy turn of events this game has been. Just like old times, it feels.
barely got a pulse here. Move him out. Where are you taking him? Where to Memorial. Best care in the Citadel. We're not going with? We need to see the Council. Right. Looks like they might be coming to see you. Commander Shepard. Got word you were arriving. Captain Bailey. Good to see you again. Yeah, uh, you too. Though it's Commander now. Congratulations. Um, uh, thanks. Now half my job is dealing with political bullshit and escorting dignitaries around. <laughs> no offense. None taken. So, you're here to bring us to the Council? I'm here to tell you the Council is expecting you, but they are dealing with their own problems with the war and everything. Uh, they apologize for the inconvenience and blah, 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 blah. Meet them here at Adina's office. They'll be ready soon enough. All right. You might have time to go by the medical center if you want to check on progress over there. That's a good idea. Yeah, I think we should. Council first. Medical center. Let's go to the medical center first. If we don't have to go to the council first, sure. Let's keep them waiting like always. Or maybe we should just call them and say, hey, Shepard's here, and then hang right up immediately. Just like old times. Thanks. I might do that. You go on ahead. I'll head up to Adina's office. One of my men can show you the way. You? I'm just a tourist today. I'll try not to get in any trouble. Commander, we've got a situation <laughs> in the embassy quarters. We could use your help. I'll be right there. The other half of my job. I'll see you around, Shepard. No doubt. Hopefully. Oh! We can talk. Priority Citadel. We got a lot of shit going on here. Human diplomat relations. We got a lot of stuff going on. We got a thousand. Whoa, we got a shit ton of funding there. About time. We didn't have any money. We kept going to the load screen. I kept seeing this is zeros here, so it goes to show that it did not import any of the money from the uh, second game. We have a lot of stuff going on here. Caden is injured. He's in critical condition. I'm hoping he pulls through, which he, he, he probably will pull through. Let's hope. I know. I know. I'm going with... I'm optimistic. Very optimistic. We have to be optimistic. It's the only way. We gotta go talk to the council. We'll read this. Priority Citadel. Well, I guess we can read it now. The council must be informed of the Reaper threat and the Prothean device that may be able to stop the Reapers. Go to the Counselor Odina's office on the Citadel and convince the council to send help for the fight against the Reapers. That's fine. Let's knock out some codexes. We have a bit here. We'll knock out codexes. And then, wait, is that a reporter? The one reporter from the first game? Let's knock out codexes here. We have to. Earth, the home world and capital. A political economic pact for collective colonial security, the Alliance is the central galactic institution of human society. The Alliance gained associate membership to the Citadel Council in 2165 and full membership in 2183 with Ambassador David Anderson representing humanity. Human political economic relationships vary between combative and lucrative. The Turians, who'd fought humans during the 2157 First Contact War, have become valuable trade partners, despite residual social hostility. Other relationships are even more complicated. The rapid rise of human political influence on the Council, achieving in decades what others waited or are still waiting centuries to acquire, has galvanized suspicion and resentment against humanity. That negativity is vastly outweighed by the respect and trust humanity earned by saving the Council during the 2183 attack on the Citadel, at the cost of Alliance cruisers Cairo, Cape Town, Emden, Jakarta, Madrid, Seoul, Shenyang, and Warsaw, and their 2,400 crew. We lost 2,400 personnel in the Battle of the Citadel. But well, we saved the Destiny Ascension. Essentially, the, the Destiny Ascension has 30 to 60,000 people on it. Imagine losing the Destiny Ascension. That would have been rough. I think we should just listen to all these. We have a bunch of stuff to read. Technically, we do not 
have a bunch of stuff to read. We only had the Reaper War to read. Very easy. Organizations? In recent years, the Elusive Man is a human loyalist focused on advancing the interests of his species, whatever the cost to non-humans and reportedly humans. The Citadel Council regards him as a fanatic who poses a serious threat to galactic security. The reclusive tycoon is the head of Cerberus, an organization that furthers his pro-human agenda throughout the galaxy. His views have led him into questionable alliances. Recent rumors go so far as to suggest that the elusive man may even have allied with the Reapers. You think the elusive man did? What if he did ally with the Reapers, kind of like Saren? Holy shit, man. Did he, is he indoctrinated like Saren? And, no, oh, because he wants to control the Reapers. What if that's his plot? Get him chummy chummy with the Reapers, yeah? And then try to dominate them like he said. Why though? Why are they making Elusive Man the enemy in this? Was he, he was the antagonist pretty much probably the whole time we didn't even know about in the second game. But why? He's such a good ally to have, man. So powerful. Him and Shepard together is such a devastating duo. The Reapers wouldn't even fucking stand a chance. But he wants to control them. You got the Alliance wanting to destroy him. And then Cerberus, Lucid Man, is fighting the Alliance because he sees the Reapers as a tool that can be used to advance humanity first, I'm sure. But do you think he'll advance the rest of the uh, galaxy? Maybe. It's not, it's not impossible. Elusive man. Fight with us, sir. In recent years. I don't know. I said it in the second game. God, I hope we can rehash what we did with him. I'm just happy we didn't give him the base. Whoa. I'm so happy we did not give him the base because that could have bit us in the ass big time right now. He would have a human reaper. Basically. Oh, hell no. How, though? What has he done to his troops? Why are his troops indoctrinated like that? Cerberus built the Normandy SR-2, originally created to covertly insert Alliance Marines into hostile environments. The UT-47 shuttle has since been sold to allies, recovered by enemies, and had its specifications stolen by spies. In one form or another, this durable transport is now used in all corners of the galaxy. A-model Kodiaks feature a front-mounted mass accelerator cannon that can be used in an anti-vehicular role. Since the shuttle lacks proper gun ports, soldiers often open the side hatch to fire on enemies. This is discouraged in Alliance manuals since it exposes the interior to return fire. Flying the 47A during atmospheric combat requires considerable skill. The pilot must reduce the vehicle's mass for speed and handling, while maintaining enough mass to resist recoil, incoming fire, and inclement weather. More than one pilot has overstressed the Kodiak's field generator and ended up on the battlefield instead of above it. It seems like they've really upgraded the shuttle from the second game. I already came into this Kodak section and I seen the Normandy, but I also seen this, and this is definitely new. But all this other stuff we've already we've already learned about. Asari made solar cyclonic barrier after the battle of the citadel human and turian volunteer <laughs> Garrus better be calibrating the shit out of them still All right, let's look at the reapers and weapons and armor. Let's look at weapons and armor now Although melee combat applications for the Omni tool are almost as old as the device itself The feature was largely unused prior to the reaper invasion the need to take on multiple husks in close quarters forced the Alliance to develop ways to enhance the tool's offensive capability. The most common melee design is the Omniblade, a disposable silicon carbide weapon flash-forged by the tool's mini fabricator. The transparent, nearly diamond-hard blade is created and suspended in a Mass Effect field safely away from the user's skin. Warning lights illuminate the field so the searing hot blade only burns what it is intended to the opponent. More technically adept soldiers frequently modify their Omni tools to maximize stopping power through electrical, kinetic, or thermal energy. 
Some troops integrate the weapon with their kinetic barriers, transforming the Omni-Tool into a wrist-mounted bludgeon. Others fabricate flammable gases held in place by a mass effect field and ignited upon impact. All prove deadly surprises for opponents who expect a disarmed Alliance warrior. That is so freaking brilliant. They turn the Omni-Tool into a freaking weapon. Look at this. I don't think we used ours, did we not? We didn't use it looking like this. When we meleeed that husk in the beginning with Anderson, it was just a biotic punch, it looked like. Whoa, man, that's fucking sick. The Reapers. The Reaper called Harbinger is... Reaper indoctrination is an insidious means of corrupting organic minds, reprogramming the brain through physical and psychological conditioning using electromagnetic fields infrasonic and ultrasonic noise, and other subliminal methods. The Reaper's resulting control over the limbic system leaves the victim highly susceptible to its suggestions. Organics undergoing indoctrination may complain of headaches and buzzing or ringing in their ears. As time passes, they have feelings of being watched and hallucinations of ghostly presences. Ultimately, the Reaper gains the ability to use the victim's body to amplify its signals manifesting as alien voices in the mind. Indoctrination can create perfect deep cover agents. A Reaper's suggestions can manipulate victims into betraying friends, trusting enemies, or viewing the Reaper itself with superstitious awe. Should a Reaper subvert a well-placed political or military leader, the resulting chaos can bring down nations. Long-term physical effects of the manipulation are unsustainable, Higher mental functioning decays, ultimately leaving the victim a gibbering animal. Rapid indoctrination is possible, but causes this decay in days or weeks. Slow, patient indoctrination allows the thrall to last for months or years. What if... Now hear me out for a second. I did read the comic with the Elusive Man and Saren. The Elusive Man and Saren had something going on in that comic. It's been a while. I guess it's been over a year now. I'm still... I, I might be missing pieces here from the comic when I'm trying to explain this, so bear with me. Saren, his brother touched the artifact that was in that comic, right? And basically, when you touched the artifact, it was a Reaper artifact, and it turned everyone into Hus. It turned his brother into Hus, but Saren, when his brother went to touch the artifact, Saren, I believe, tried to pull him away from the artifact? Yeah? And when he pulled him away from the artifact, Saren got zapped with the artifact as well, the power. But Saren, this is why he has these blue eyes here, and the same with the Elusive Man. The Elusive Man did the same thing, in a sense. He tried to pull someone else off from being... It was almost like Shepard from the first game. You know how he had that... He was in the beacon, basically? And how Shepard came up to Ashley and pulled Ashley back and threw her off? That was kind of what was going on here with this artifact, right? But what if... I know Saren, from the events of the first game, went to the Reapers. Or maybe the Reapers found him, or something. I think it was something to do with a briefcase in the book, the first book. It had knowledge of Sovereign. I think that's what it was. The ultimately, what Saren was looking for was that briefcase or the knowledge for Sovereign. Anyways, long story short, what if these... The eyes, the connection, right, to that artifact? What if it's now taken a toll? It doesn't matter about Saren because Saren's gone, but what if all these years it's got the elusive man, he's trying to fight this war within himself and now he's full, now he's indoctrinated some way or something. I just don't understand the fact that we have to fight the elusive man now. It seems like he is an enemy and he wants to control the Reapers, but is Saren, did, did Saren want to control the Reapers? I don't think Saren wanted to control the Reapers. Saren wanted us to submit to the Reapers, basically. He was talking about an alliance formed with the Reapers, basically. In a way. They indoctrinate us and do what the fuck they want with us, so... It just makes me wonder, you know? It just makes me wonder how the Elusive Man got to the point that he is now. And why he wants... Why he thinks that we can control the Reapers. I mean, we can't... Look, we've seen it. We got on that one Reaper. His whole fucking Cerberus organization that went to that Reaper to study it was indoctrinated. I don't think there's a way to possibly even remotely control anything to do with any Reapers, anything to do with indoctrination at all. So, yeah.
Sovereign was the first Reaper encountered by the modern Citadel races. Military leaders initially assumed that Sovereign was a Geth or Prothean flagship commanded by Saren Arterius, a rogue specter. The truth was far more alarming. The massive ship was itself intelligent, and Saren proved to be under its control. The attacks by Sovereign against Eden Prime and the Citadel removed any uncertainty about the Reaper's technological superiority. Sovereign's formidable shielding and firepower allowed it to hold off the combined fleets of the Citadel, and its mass effect fields proved powerful enough to let the enormous vessel land on a planet's surface. Sovereign's mission, to open a mass relay that would transport the other Reapers from dark space, proved its undoing. During the Battle of the Citadel, Sovereign linked its consciousness to Saren's. When Saren's death corrupted the signal and shut down Sovereign's shields, Sovereign's destruction soon followed. We did fucking whoop his ass pretty quick, though. So basically, we gotta figure out how to dismantle their shields. What if this weapon is a way to take their shields off? Because Reaper shields are impervious. We heard about that in a second game somewhere. Once his shield went off, it was his fair game, easy peasy. What if this weapon zaps their shields off? They can't do anything with their shields. And we're able to just use basic fire on them and kill them. What? A myth common to several cultures in the galaxy, Reapers were once imagined as space monsters that consumed entire stars. Archaeologists who searched for the sources of such myths found little besides the themes of all-consuming devils that are common to primitive cultures. Although accurate information about the Reapers remains scarce, the galaxy now knows that the Reapers are not a myth. They are a real and devastating threat. <laughs> ah, yes. Reapers. Sure, <laughs> the council still fucking probably won't believe it. We need proof, Shepard. We need more proof. The Reaper Wait. called Harbin. Husks are the aggressive, mindless... We already know about Hus. We've read that one. All right, the regular codex part is done. Shall we look at the Reaper War and read this and just get fully up to speed for when we, when we come in next episode? Yeah, let's do that. The fall of Earth. It took Earth in a matter of hours. The Alliance knew the first wave would arrive from Batarian space, but they were unprepared for the speed and scale of the attack. Maybe that's why they have... Okay, so they came from Batarian space first. Maybe that's why this cannibal stuff is a thing. They end up. Are the. Are the. Are they gone? Already? The Batarians? Just. We're gonna find out in the fall of Karshan, because Karshan was. Something from. That's one of the planets from. The Arrival DLC area that we were able to read. The Reapers bypassed the 6th and 7th fleet at Terra Nova and Eden Prime, flying straight from the relay to relay where they could neither be tracked nor intercepted. The tactic was unexpected since the navies of organic species would never risk coming out of FTL within combat range or leaving enemies at their backs to threaten supply lines. So they just flew straight to relay to relay, where they could neither be tracked nor intercepted. Holy hell. At Arctor Station, more than a dozen Reaper capital ships engaged the Alliance 2nd, 3rd, and 5th fleet. This was mere screening for the main force. Dozens more capital ships continued through the Charon Relay where the 1st Fleet had been lying in wait, but was soon destroyed. The 4th Fleet near Earth had a few minutes of advance warning. It stood no better chance. After destroying Earth's convoys, smaller Reaper destroyers wiped out all GPS and communication satellites in Earth's orbit and cut the undersea fiber optics cables that linked the continents. So the smaller we've seen... Okay, the big one. We've seen the big Reapers, the one the Sovereign looks like, and that's the biggest one would be Harbinger. But we've seen that. But not only did we see that right when the shuttle blew up and the, the kid's death, sadly, there was a smaller Reaper. That must be the Destroyers, yeah? Earth's resistance now relies on outdated radio towers and a few quantum entanglement communicators whose matches pairs happen to be on other continents or outside the solar system. Communication is so limited that the fate of entire nations remains unknown. Wow, they, he, we're done. We can't, we, we're just done. At this, unless we can blow the Reapers to hell with this device, then it's, it's over. 
Crazy. The capital ships bombarded defense installations and industrial centers, annihilating entire cities with populations in the low millions, including Adelaide, Hamburg, Algebel, and Fort Worth. Meanwhile, Reaper destroyers descended into the atmosphere to melt roads and capture population centers with minimal loss of life. This is not an example of Reaper being merciful. More likely, they are hurting their prey to make the coming harvest that much easier. So they come down, they kill all the people that defy them. And what do they harvest? Because if they're killing the people that defy them, you got to figure that when you get hit with one of them beams, you're probably going to explode. You're going to be dust. So they can't harvest you, harvest you if you're dust. So it's stating that they're hurting people. More likely, they are hurting their prey to make the coming harvest that much easier. Because they need us. Why would they just come here just to kill us? That doesn't make sense. They would... They let us get to the apex of our evolution, and then what? They just want to fight just to prove and kill all organics? No, it's the whole thing with the Reaper in the second game where they're using our DNA for just making more of themselves. The Fall of Karshan. For every thousand Batarian refugees, there are a thousand and one stories about how the Reapers invaded the Batarian systems. A few elements are common to almost every version, however. The Reapers arrived first in the Volar system and immediately destroyed its communications network. The Hygemony's Department of Information and Control blamed the loss of signal on space weather. Wait, it makes me wonder... So they were going for the Alpha Relay first. That's what they wanted to do. So because they didn't hit the Alpha Relay, they were still on their way to the Alpha Relay. And instead of going somewhere else, no other system, they just found another relay in the Batarian system and went to that. And that was what they came through first. But scrambled ships to the system nonetheless. Within a day, Reaper capital ships appeared in the Harsha system and descended on the Batarian homeworld Karshan. For all the rhetoric about the Hegemony's military prowess, their response to the Reapers was uncoordinated. Moments after the information minister took to the extranet and announced that unknown ships were destroying all space traffic near Karshan, the defense minister declared there was no reason to panic. The planet's convoys were destroyed next, creating an ominous silence that has persisted ever since. Fearing they were next, Batarian colonies across Hegemony space began evacuations. So many refugees poured into the human-occupied Exodus Cluster that Systems Alliance officials at first thought the Batarians were invading. Damn, that must have been crazy. That... I wonder if they were fleeing into the human space as we were, like, on trial. As in waiting all that time on trial. Because you know they were fleeing after, you know, the Reapers invaded. They invaded when we were in trial. But still, I wonder if that just... If the Reapers never invaded, I wonder what they would have done with Shepard. They would have court-martialed him, put him in the brig, and then he would have rotted for the rest of his life, probably. If the Reapers never made it here. Well, they were going to make it eventually, but still. More systems have gone dark as their convoys were destroyed and millions more Batarians trapped on their planets sit waiting for the Reapers. Holy hell, man. The Batarians took the brunt of everything. And then the humans, the Batarians and humans. Hey, friends, we caught up on the codexes. How does it feel? We did it. Anything at this point is all new, which is very welcome. I was just really worried. I wanted to get to a point. You're on the Normandy, right? I saw it dock. It was last seen on Earth. Did Commander Shepard escape? He did, didn't he? So why would he be here unless he's seeing the council? Ma'am, I can't talk about that. You don't have to. Commander Shepard! Okay, we're not going to talk to this lady. We're going to wait until next episode because this might lead to something. I don't know. We'll talk to her next episode, yeah? I think, I think we should... Yeah, we'll just talk to her next episode. Because I still want to talk a little bit more before we talk to this person. The elusive man is just really bugging me. It's really bugging me that he's going down this route to fight the Alliance and not work together. We can ultimately have the same thing here, but he just really believes in control. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Can we scan him? Commander Shepard. She's going to keep calling us, huh? <laughs> Let's go over here. 
We'll just deal with it next episode when we first come in. But still, I just... It's just a lot to swallow. It's a lot going on here, man. We got the Reapers invaded. Earth is gone. Marshawn's gone. We don't know anything else besides that. We don't know if the other planets... The Council Race's planets are just under siege as well. Because you got to understand that... I just have a feeling that the Council is just not going to help us. They're just... The Council has not really been that helpful for us when we called for it. Up until this point. They've done what they can. But I just have a feeling it's going to be the same old, same old. Ah, yes. Reapers. We dismissed that claim. They're not here now. But hey, look at the bright side. The Citadel is nice and lovely this time of year. It seems. <laughs> the Reapers are here, but they're not in the Citadel area, which is very nice. I guess they just don't care. The Reapers said, fuck it. We'll just we'll take out the races the hard way. Crazy. A lot of stuff going on. We, ha we got to hope that Caden is doing well. The whole Eva Kore thing was just wild. So she was just, uh, what was she? She was a, she was a robot. An AI, maybe? Maybe she was an AI. Oh, she had skin. She looked like a regular person. Holy hell, Elusa, man. This is why we gotta work together. He's so fucking brilliant. Anyways, my friends, I'm out of here. Have a good one. Stay safe. See you next time. Take care.